Okay, quick hits. These are quick ones. All right. Yeah. Oprah Winfrey. That is not a quick one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one of, I'll, okay, I'll be quick. Then you can go to my channel and watch the rest of the videos. I've done many videos on her. She's one of the darkest things I've channeled so far. Wow. It was, uh, blew my mind. Um, and I'll say this, that all of the things that they present in the media about her is part of her brand. They've allowed her to create this brand. Um, and so, uh, but she's called upon to do other things in exchange for fame and fortune. Um, and she, but she does very, she does nefarious things. She does things that are, um, that we would view as very bad. Um, but she, the reason why she does all these positive things, like give away things and write spiritual books and stuff, it's that she believes it's her atonement for the things that she's doing. So it's very, uh, one of the darkest things <laughs> that I've channeled. Wow. Okay. Uh <laughs>
I had a perfect record. I was in the top and everything I'd done. So they couldn't just let me go. But in the end, I was so loud that they, they, they did. They let me go. But they gave me a contract and offered me $100,000 to stay silent about everything I knew when they let me go, telling me what a great employee I was, all of it. I was hysterical. I was sick because, because like I talk about on my channel, I was told how I was going to live my whole life from the childhood. You, 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 you go work for a company, you start putting yeah. some pennies in a 401k retirement plan, and then someday you retire and maybe you can travel if you have good health. So I was like, I have my whole, I have my whole plan all set out. But I was getting bullied so bad, uh, 2000 and, and told to shut up, told, you know, trying, they were trying to silence me August of 2019. I called out for help and just said, if there's anything out there that can help me, I feel my soul dying. And I didn't know if there was anything out there. I just made that call. And within three months I was out of there. And three months after that, I started channeling. So I tell people really trust the process and understand that sometimes things that seem super traumatic are actually miracles in disguise, but you won't know until you look back. Right. Exactly. And you and that's another reason why I think we connected um, as well is that I'm that person, too, that I can't see something going on that's wrong and not call it out. Like, I, I just I can't I, I can't look the other way. I can't put my head in the sand. I, I am that person that will stick my neck out and go, no, you can't do this to that person. That's not fair. That's not right. Or if it's something that's just flat out, you know, illegal. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to call it out, but it is, it's, it's those few people who put their neck on the line and say this, you can't continue to do that, that um, a lot of times they do get pushed out, but then, like you said, you got pushed out into something much, much bigger, much grander. Absolutely. Um, so let's, uh, so I, one reason why, again, the the TikTok channel that you have, I, I love I love going. I actually visited again today just before this this interview. And um, I, I like what you because this is what happens when when folks become aware or awake, when they start to awaken, the veil is being lifted and they start to see the the corruption, the you know, I won't. There's certain words that we won't use, but the the uh Satanists, uh, you know, all that stuff. And what they do is, is they become consumed with watching videos, getting angry and saying, you know, we need to stop this and which is understandable, but they become consumed with this negative energy as well. And I love how you frame this, how, yes, you can see this happening, but don't be consumed by it because as you would say, well, because you just manifest more of it and create a reality for yourself. That's going to, you're going to, the more you invest your energy from a lower vibrational perspective, uh, I actually made a video I'm going to upload here in the next couple of days. Your, if your negative energy of hate or fear or anger, or even judgment, you're on a conveyor belt now of going to bring, you're going to be bringing more things along that line into your life. So you have to consciously make a decision to be in observation mode all right, I see this. Is I see this now. Um, now, what do I do about this, right? And you have to make a conscious effort to eliminate things from your life, turn off the things that are bringing you down, so you can raise your vibration. Because when you get onto a higher vibrational conveyor belt, you now will bring things in on that vibration. So the very thing you're pissed off about, I don't know if I can say that. The very thing that you're upset about is is the very thing that's going to be manifested more into your life. You, we got to let that go. Well, yeah. And, and because the, the, those energies can be quite dark, even mm -hmm. if you're, if you're viewing them or witnessing them from afar, they can be quite dark. And then I believe they can attach themselves to you. Um, even in my history of like calling out stuff, right. And, and, um, and saying, saying things quite publicly, I always envisioned myself sort of surrounded in a, in a bubble, like in a, in a big um, pink bubble. And I would, call it out i would say this is this is where i have a problem with the official narrative the government narrative or the you know the politicians narrative uh the media the news i mean my goodness they've lied to us for so long <laughs> but uh calling that out um i would call it out and i would be very clear and but i would have my protective bubble and then when i was done with it i would surround myself with things that 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 were of a higher vibration in other words, I didn't stay there. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? 
totally. And it's funny because um, the way that my I channel this group of cosmic beings and the way they present things to me and the way that they I share it, I have majority of beautiful followers. I, the majority of the time, I have I because I because I'm presenting it from a place of love versus yes. anger, which I then I see right. that in my own reality. I know people who are presenting similar information, not from channeling, but based on their own massive research, like literally traveling around the globe, reading all the books, all the texts, all the scrolls, all the ancient stuff. They're presenting it on their channel from a place of more negativity and they get so much hate in their comments. It's because of the vibration that they're presenting it from. It's literally becomes, uh, it, you literally attract more of that into your life. It's That's powerful. That's so powerful. So what is the, so what would you say uh, if you had a megaphone to gazillions of people, what would you say is really one of the most important messages that your um, that your guides are telling you also to share with the world? Um, but that are that is really important right now at this moment in our human history. What are some of those messages that you think are really important for people to hear? I'm asking them right now, and what they're saying is um, because there's so much that I channel that I share on my account, but the, I would say in a nutshell, the most important thing is to understand that you chose to be here for a reason. You're here for a reason. You chose this. Everything in our life is happening based on, I channel soul contracts and, and life blueprints for people. And I see the soul contracts that have created even trauma in our lives, because even the trauma is here to teach us, help us evolve, but then also help give us the tools which creates um, the opportunity to help other people with this. So understand, number one, you're here for a reason. You're not here by accident. All of the destruction and the mayhem and the horrible things that we understand are happening around the globe. Um, we knew it was going to happen and we still chose to be here. So then the next question is, well, what do I do about this now? And what you do about this now is find a way to um, uh, seek truth, understand what's really going on, but then ask yourself now, how do I help other people with this? Instead of getting sucked into the trauma and the drama of it, because it's not going to end. The only way this is going to end is if each one individual person on this globe switches their vibration and stops feeding the system with even just watching it on the news. When you watch it, you're feeding it. So unplug, know that you're here for a reason and be part of creating the life that you want, which then helps to create the collective reality. We are creating the collective reality based on what we, what we see, what we envision, our belief systems and our emotions that is right. So if you're watching the news or you're watching Hollywood or, or, or you've been indoctrinated by whatever system, the man-made religious system or, or whatever other system it, it is and it, and it's making you, it's making you angry. You are manifesting more of that into your, into your reality. So understand that you're here for a reason and you have a choice on where you spend your time and energy and where you spend your time and energy is going to create not just your reality, but the collective reality. They want us to be in fear. They want us to be fighting. They want us to be angry because that continues to perpetuate the very thing that we're angry about. Mm. And you said, said something really important too about our, our beliefs. We, we are very powerful beings. We've been told for ever that you're nothing you're born in sin you know you're you're a speck you have an angry god you have to be accountable to if you're gay oh my gosh you're going to hell um all those things right but then when you actually really look into the power that we have and our beliefs um there was a placebo um test that they did. And I remember studying this. And I remember going, this is so powerful. This should be headline news. But when um, an authority figure, let's say a doctor in a white coat, and they've got a degree of, you know, in, in, on their wall and a stethoscope, and they come to you and they say, hey, um, you've got high blood pressure, right, Bill? Uh, I've got the latest pharmaceutical drug. This is brand new. And it is amazing. It literally, you take the pill and it normalizes your blood pressure. If you're high, it goes, you know, to the mid range. If you're low, it goes back up to the mid range. It is brilliant, brilliant technology, rah, 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 whatever. And they give you that pill. Lo and behold, because you believe in the system and you believe in the doctor and you believe in the pharmacy, you believe in that your blood pressure normalizes. Now they did the placebo effect where they just gave, people a sugar pill there's no drug in there there's no chemical there's nothing it's a sugar pill but because the doctor had said all these things their physical body 
changed and their blood pressure was normalized because of their belief. So if that happens to us on a physical level, imagine that magnified and that rippled out into the universe and to our planet, into our communities. That's powerful. That should be headline news. And yet. Oh. Well, of course, they're not going to tell us any of that in the news because that would change the entire world, right? The, the news is owned by the same people who are running the globe like a global pyramid, which I talk about on my channel, right? So there's also studies, I'll add to that, that they have studies where children who are not doing well in math, they put, put them in a study where they just are inundated with positive reinforcement, how, how great they are at math, they're mathematical geniuses. Guess what? Every single one of those children became top of their class in math because if if children believe what they're being told, which is why I talk about this on my channel too, when you when we come out of the womb, we we still ha hold our, we have our magic, we have our abilities. I remember having these gifts when I was a kid, but I was told I was lying. <laughs> Shut them down. Um, <laughs> lo and behold, they forced them back in. You know, I forgot. But we're told who we are from the time we come out of the womb, and then we're then new programs are are implanted, right? So if we know that through studies, if we are telling children who are struggling, they, they've done this with music too. People, who, kids who are struggling with playing instruments and then they're they're told they're amazing musicians. Go do the research, don't take my word for it. Go do the research, people. Go do the research and find out they have so many studies that are not, you're not gonna ever find it on, probably even Google, any mass media because it's owned by the people who don't want you to know this. When someone believes something, they're, they can shift their entire reality, right? So just like the placebo, also go research the double slit experiment. There's a lot of quantum physics and science to back this up that you will never find out there because once people, which we are, start to wake up to who we really are and what we're capable of doing, I'm channeling cosmic beings. Are you going to hear about that on the mass media? Of course not. When we realize what our gifts are and how powerful we are, we will change the entire globe. And that's what's happening now. And that's why there's so much mayhem and destruction. My, my, this group of cosmic beings that I channel say there's so much mayhem and destruction. They're literally pulling out all of the stops right now to yeah. keep us in fear because we're having a mass awakening. We're starting to wake up to who we really are in our gifts and that the jig is up, <laughs> the jig is up. So that's why it's important to stay focused on positivity as well. Well, I, I totally see that. I see all these little lights lighting up around the whole, you know, the planet. And I think it's the last gasps of control. And, and they're going to, they're going to try, you know, they'll try whatever I'll try, you know, the water, the air, the jabby jabs, jab, whatever to, to keep us in line, to keep us in control and to keep us small. Because once people wake up to how absolutely powerful they are, just by their thoughts, just by their words, you know, then there's no turning back and the tables are flipped, right? So the narrative gets changed. And so it is, it's that last gasp of control, which is really great because that means that we're, you know, people are waking up and they're tapping into it. And thankfully there's TikTok channels like yours too, that people can wake up to. Now, you want to go down a rabbit hole? Yes, please. Okay. All right. I'm going to throw out a couple names and then you're going to just give me a, not a Reader's Digest version, but like a quick hit on what you think is happening or happened. Okay. Okay. I already know my own. I've already got my own, but um, let's just see here. All right. I know this one because this, this one, this person is uh, brought up often uh, on your channel. Um, Britney Spears. You, yeah. want, you want me to give you a, 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 a ah? You want me to give you the cliff note version of what's happening with Britney Spears? Okay. Um, what's happening with Britney Spears? First of all, I didn't know any of this before I started channeling, but uh, I have channeled um, over the course of time that she has been a meal ticket since day one. I I, I was shown her childhood. She wasn't really loved. She was um, really looked at as a way to make money, um, and when she got to that point where she was able to make a lot of money for people, um, she was pulled into this system of control. And um, fast forward to the conservatorship, the conservatorship, I, when I heard about the conservatorship, my, my human, Heather thought, oh, that's awful, that's horrible. And it was, however, 
it actually protected her from people above. So there's a low level group of people that, that are over politics, Hollywood, all the things. They control it all. It's, it's, it's all scripted. And the conservatorship was actually a little bit of a buffer between her and the people above her, but she still did not have autonomy. She had to perform. She didn't want to be doing any of the things she wanted to do, but there were contracts that she had to sign, like many people in Hollywood do. Yeah. Um, there's some even darker things I've channeled around some of these people, but she had she signed contracts that basically said if she didn't perform, she would be she would be punished, right? So she is now a tool for people to make money. And what they showed me is that when the conservatorship ended, it didn't, you can, you can, semantics is one thing. Maybe some people say it just ended, some people say it didn't end it, but from an energetic perspective, a cosmic perspective, what they showed me is that she now has, she hasn't been seen. Anytime we see, anytime they show us that she's been seen, um, the only time she actually has ever seen, my guides have shown me, is if she's, if she's on social media, once in a while it's her, but they only allow her to put things out that make her look crazy. So um, she's got a body double. She has a whole team around her that control her. They keep her incoherent. They keep her confused on whatever they're giving her. Something is happening to her at night. They keep her inco incoherent and confused so that they continue leveraging her for to make money. Not, it, not a single person in her circle actually cares about her. And what they showed me is that anytime anyone starts to build empathy or compassion, they're kicked out of the circle and they have to sign silence agreements. So there are people who have seen what's going on, but they have kicked her out. They kicked them out. You have to operate from a very high level of greed in order to stay in the circle of control. They are using her. And what kind, who writes a book, especially that famous, and doesn't come out and talk about it, right? So when people sometimes will say to me, oh, we saw Brittany. Uh, somebody showed her that she got pulled over by a cop. We haven't seen Brittany. It's all smoke and mirrors that we see. So this poor woman is literally trapped. They move her from place to place. I actually, um, I'll just say somebody found my channel who knows her, um, who um, there's, they have a connection to someone that she's known since childhood, very close. And they said, I'm the only channel that's gotten this right about what's happening and that she sometimes reaches out and tries to um, call these people and then she's disconnected. And the next time there's a different number phone number she comes, she calls from and she's whispering, she's disconnected. So they literally completely keep her away from anyone that could possibly help her. And they have her trapped to keep making money from her. She's a tool. My, my guides say, uh, what do you guys say? Um, uh, Brittany is a brand, they say. Brittany is a brand. Brittany is not considered a person in this area. She's considered a brand, a way to make money. She's a commodity. She's a commodity. And many people are. And what they've shown me with Hollywood, I had no idea this was happening, was that they, Hollywood, the people above Hollywood, the lower level management of this, of this planet, um, they prey on people who are um, maybe lack self-worth, lack self-love. They maybe have experienced trauma. They look for certain ingredients and then they promise them fame and fortune in exchange to sign contracts where they're trapped. So there are a lot of these people might have lots and lots of money, but they're not living their life autonomously. They're not living their sovereignty. They're literally trapped. Why haven't more people come out and speaking out specifically about Britney? Because they can't. They can. They can. You always have a choice. Like my story, like, like right. your stories. Right? You always have a choice, but there's fear invo invoked and there's contracts that they signed to keep them in fear so that this poor woman continues to be trapped. So people know what's going on. They just haven't gotten the courage yet to, to step up. Yeah, my my initial hit, my intuition was it. Anytime I think of her, I I become extremely sad because I feel that. But I feel that she has been extremely traumatized from a very young age. Massively. And uh, and as you know, when people are that at that level of stardom too, they can travel the entire world, and um, it, it's all under the guise of um, pop singer, celebrity, actor, whatever. But she is, yeah, that's that's what I get is that um, uh, Operation Monarch Butterfly, whatever you want to call it, MK Ultra type thing. That's what I feel when I when I just think of her. Um, and it's just, and it's similar to the situation. And I'll throw out this name as well. But um, when I thought of uh, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe again the story oh overdosed oh you know poor thing blah, 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 blah. um but she was hanging out with some quite powerful people yeah the, what's your hit that, on Marilyn well I I have to formally channel her she's on my list um now I will <laughs> now I have to because <laughs> <laughs> um 
So I will channel her, but you know, there's, there's the third dimensional, like what we hear about what might've happened. Oh, she knew information, you know, um, she was going to come out or speak about, but what my guides show me is the, actually what happened energetically, like spiritually. She'll, they'll also show me soul contracts. So it is very similar. Um, it, it, but this is the thing is that people are starting to wake up and going and going, Oh, there's been a lot of bathtub dust. There's been a lot of, yeah. <laughs> been a lot of old overdoses there's been a lot of people falling off their balconies there's all it's like come on guys like get creative at least it's starting to become really obvious and it's because these people what my guys are saying right now these people are used to um create narratives these people are used to sell a narrative it, it could be as low level as selling insurance or medicine as you can see on tv some of these people are selling like come on um but uh, cars whatever it could be as low level as that or it could be a narrative such as during 2020, there were some people, and I've channeled people who did not want to um, promote the agenda for 2020, their shows got canceled. They got a smear campaign. Yeah. The people who promoted it, they got more money. They got more fame and fortune. So these people are used as a narrative. If they start going against the narrative, if they wake up and say, this doesn't feel good anymore, um, then they either get smeared to keep them in line. If they step out again, they're gone, right? They, they've overdosed, they got in a car accident, they got a helicopter accident. It, there's constantly these accidents. And what I've channeled was it's because they started saying, this doesn't feel good anymore because maybe they started to wake up and they said, I can't do this anymore. So yeah. they're facing the narratives until they can't be. I got the, um, I'll throw out another name and I got the same thing on this. And actually the, the intuitive hit I got on this person was, um, in addition to claiming their own life back and creative works, which was a big no-no, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you do that? Um, but had the dirt on some stuff and was not afraid at that point to come out. But that was um, Prince. Oh, wow. And I have a special place in my heart for Prince. <clears throat> not that I was so a huge Prince fan, but I just, I was like, they took him out. <laughs> they took him out. Did they? I don't know. Oh, really? I haven't channeled yet because oh, you haven't uh, gotten channeled, you haven't channeled him yet. I haven't channeled Prince yet, but I've channeled Michael Jackson. Oh, what is what about Michael? So, uh, Michael, Michael, um, was sharing truth, speaking truth, and I'm having to recall here the uh the, the the powers that were I call them that um you know were threatened by him it's hard for me even to say this stuff but he had a doctor right he had a doctor who was in who who was part of this whole when this yep. all went down what they showed me was that these powers that were above Hollywood went to the doctor and they first started out kind of wanting him to be a spy of some sort um and then they wanted to um have him help them take Michael out but he had gotten close to Michael he actually had kind of he loved Michael and so he ended up sharing with Michael the plan and from what they've shown me I have yet to see it in you know third dimensional proof but what they showed me is it looks like he might have helped him get out it looks like he's not he's he might still be oh out. oh oh yeah we'll because see. there is that amb there is that ambulance video Isn't I don't there? know I don't know there's an ambulance video. I think there's an ambulance video of Michael Jackson, like getting out of the but, ambulance or something. I don't know. I'm totally being speculative, but well, especially since, yeah. And, but he had a, he, had, he bought the Beatles catalog, didn't he? I don't know. I know nothing about these people until I channel, but they, they did tell me that he was, an, they showed me because they'll show me the person. They'll almost like put me in the body of the person and I can feel what they're feeling. And they showed me that he was the most kind, compassionate person. He never hurt anyone. But um, the children that would come, he created He created this place at his um, home. Well, I forgot what it was called. I think it was called Neverland Ranch or something. He created this place at his home because he didn't really get to experience childhood. And he wanted to give... Um, specifically children in Hollywood, but children an opportunity to play because he didn't get that opportunity. And through that experience, he started hearing children speak about the trauma they were enduring in the industry and he wanted to help them. And that was the threat. That's what oh, they wanted to do. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, I, I met him. I didn't meet him in person. I worked on a, uh, I worked a, a day for a rehearsal. Uh, that he was doing at Sony Studios, and it was a rehearsal for one of his big tours. And I just remember um, 
being given specific instructions. Do not make sure you do not look at it. You know, don't do that. And it wasn't him that had that specific thing. It was just the production company. Anyway, so I had to go across um, underneath the stage sort of in, in, in front of him, but I had to, to take water from one thing to the other. And so I'm like, you know, running across and I got a blast. I got hit with this blast of the most beautiful, powerful energy. You know, when you see at concerts, when the, the, the front row of people and they're, and they're crying and they're they're, it's, um, it's that, it's that emotion. It's the same thing. Um, people say with, uh, Tina Turner, cause Tina Turner can be, you know, you could be sitting in 800th row behind, you know, Tina Turner and she emits this energy. He had that sort of energy where it was just like, it would have knocked me over, but it was, uh, it was just a beautiful, powerful energy that he had. And um, I'll never forget that. Cause I was just like, wow, now I can see why I understand why people are, you know, just crying and like, ah, <laughs> doing all of that. I can understand it. And they don't even know why it's just this overwhelming feeling. And they said, he's a star seed. Um, so, you know, he was here to help wake people up, which, one last thing I'll say about Brittany is that they've also shown me because I always try on soul contracts. She's here to be a mirror to the collective and show us that yeah. it's yeah. not so different than what we're experiencing. We, we, she is what my guide showed me was that they create an illusion of freedom for her. They will actually call ahead if they, if she ever goes out anywhere, I don't know if it's still happening now, they might have her, she might not even be leaving her house at all anymore, but whenever they go somewhere, they call ahead, clear the restaurant and then hire people to be in there. Oh, to, to be like patrons. Illusion. Oh, geez. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. You know, that signed contract is not going to share anything, but, but she thinks they're, they create an illusion for her so that, and, and they also like have this, they have a shadow account for her where she thinks she's posting, but they catch it and they pull it down. Like she did, she does not understand that what she believes is real is not real, but they also keep her incoherent. And she's a mirror for us because, you know, until right now, a lot of people are waking up we, you know, many, many, many people still believe what they see on the news is real. What they hear, what, what they're hearing from Hollywood is real. What we're told about disasters is real. And Brittany is here to be the wake up call for us to go, hold on, wait a minute though. Is it real? Or how can we take control back of our own life? So she actually has a very difficult soul contract to help other people wake up from her own experience. Another, another person that I think, um, might be in that similar situation. And I don't know what your, what your take is on this, but I know when this, when, when she passed, um, I, got, I felt it hard. Um, princess Diana now is she, is she really passed? I don't know, but princess Diana, um, first of all, I just, I, the Royal family, mm, I'll, I just won't say anything, but, uh, when princess Diana, I think the, the whole world, uh, mourned very, very hard over that, over that loss. And it was as if we lost a, a piece of our heart, you know, when that happened. Did you, have you channeled anything around Princess Diana? I just a little bit, but probably not enough to, 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 to have impact here. Um, but she is a very popular one that's, that's requested. I just wait for my guys to tell me who they want me to channel. Um, but she is one and they did show me, she was a beautiful, beautiful, bright light. She was also a star seed. She also, um, came here to help people wake up. Um, and one of my questions is, is she gone? I don't know. I don't know. I need to, I need to channel that, but, um, that she was like, uh, I don't know if you remember, like Sesame Street's one of these things is not like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was like that in the royal family. She didn't fit because she was light. She was truth. Right. I did channel Harry and Megan, though, um, and they showed me that uh, they actually have soul contracts to withdraw from the royal family to help facilitate a dismantling. So I'm sure Princess Diana had, you know, had potentially a similar role in that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely one of these things did not, she did not belong there at all. It was it's sort of like the, the trapped Rapunzel or something, you know, in, in the, in the castle where you want to like rescue. Her. I always, we always, I, I always felt like I wanted to rescue her, you know, whenever I saw her out and with the, with the Royal family, I was like, I got to rescue her somehow. But um, yeah, just a very powerful um, presence that she's, she has. And I, anytime I think of her, I, 
I can feel, I feel her presence. Um, oh, again, yeah. it could be just her soul, you know, contract with, with, with the world. Um, all right. We, uh, oh my gosh, we're running out of time, but I want to, uh, okay. Quick hits. These are quick ones. All right. Yeah. Oprah Winfrey. That is not a quick one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one of the, I'll, okay. I'll be quick. Then you can go to my channel, watch the rest of the videos. I've done many videos on her. She's one of the darkest things I've channeled so far. Wow. It was, uh, blew my mind. Um, and I'll say this, that all of the things that they present in the media about her is part of her brand. They've allowed her to create this brand. Um, and so, uh, but she's called upon to do other things in exchange for fame and fortune. Um, and she, but she does very, she does nefarious things. She does things that are, um, that we would view as very bad. Um, but she, the reason why she does all these positive things, like give away things and write spiritual books and stuff, is because she believes it's her atonement for the things that she's doing. So it's very, uh, one of the darkest things <laughs> that I've channeled. Wow. Okay. Um, and not, not to go too far. Um, well, and you tell me, um, Bill Gates. Another surprising one that's much easier. What they showed me with Bill Gates is that he is not actually responsible for um, all of this huge success that they're saying he's responsible for. He's allowed to, he, I had no idea. He's allowed this um, fame and fortune in exchange for being the face of certain agendas, which they said are actually shells of other things that he, that, that he's participating in. And he's so eager for the fame and fortune that they showed me, he will do whatever it takes um, to, to, he'll do whatever they ask him to do with, with, with no thought, with no thought, but he's not the brains behind all of this stuff. Right. Right. Um, and you see that also what's happening in, in the music industry. Like it, and now they're just it's coming out just like blatant, like little gnaws or whatever that, you know, just the, the symbolism that is being um, put out there. And then they, the more famous to get the, the more money they get, um, the more they come out with this um, symbolism. I didn't watch the, that Super Bowl just because I just didn't, I didn't want to see anything. I was coming across. Um, Okay, here's a twofer um, because the elections are coming up soon. And it, I mean, it's looking like, although we could be throwing a curveball because one of them doesn't look like he's going to last too long, but Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Yeah. So first let me say, I don't, I don't follow any of this stuff on my own. I, I'm not political. I've never watched the news, anything like that. So I only know this, what I've channeled. Um, I channeled Trump last summer. I do need to channel him again, but what's, um, they, they showed me that he's here to poke the bear awake. <laughs> he's here actually to help people wake up. So some people who might not like, so this is high level cosmic stuff, right? Spiritual soul contract stuff. He's here to stir the pot in order to um, get everyone's attention, especially the ones that don't favor him because those are the ones that give him more energy and time. And then they're the ones that are going to be potentially woken up by whatever he says or does. When I channeled Biden, um, they said, the man known as Biden, <laughs> meaning that's not Joe Biden. <laughs> it's someone else playing Joe Biden. I mean, come on. If you watch anything that's not on mass media or even mass media, it's to my understanding, you can see this person is not doing well. So it's an actor. Um, and, they, and they're also still saying that's the last award show where Oprah Winfrey appeared. It wasn't Oprah Winfrey. Um, so they put out these they put out these people to continue a certain narrative. The narrative because right. they, people are asleep, right? It's all about the narrative. Any predictions that you have for the election? No, but it is on my list to channel because I, people have asked a lot about it. It feels, um, I think this might be obvious, but it feels like it's not going to go as planned. It's not going to go like we, like it's, like it's supposed to go every time yeah. we have an election. It feels like we're going to, there's going to be some. Yeah. Uh, something. You know, I've something heard, I heard on. someone said that they might throw out um, Michelle Obama. I heard that, but uh, <laughs> when I channel stuff, what they show me is those, they, it's like they more show me the man behind the curtain for stuff. Right. And, uh, because we have free will and things change all the time. So even if they were planning on throwing someone in the ring, depending on free will, they might end up not. So they show me behind the scenes, the intention of all this stuff of the intention of where they want this to go and the intention of what they expect to happen. Um, and I was, I was feeling that it'll be, it feels like it's going to be, uh, you know, some, some type of chaotic it's chaos is going to happen around that, but I haven't channeled that yet, but it's on my list. Yeah. Okay. We got your homework cut out for you. I know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh. It's been such a wonderful conversation with you and I could talk to you forever and ever and ever. And I'm, um, I'm hoping that you're welcome back anytime to out of the box with Christine. We can talk about the cosmos and we could talk really about our soul contracts as well. Um, I just wanted to throw out some of those, those little quick hits there because they're folks that have come across, you know, in my world and I figure that our, our wonderful listeners and viewers that are on YouTube uh, would have liked to have heard about it a little bit. So I want to encourage everybody to also go to your TikTok channel and Instagram because sometimes TikTok, sometimes they, they, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, you'll be clear if you go to both of those. So uh, on TikTok, we'll make sure we have a link to the uh, TikTok channel right here in the show notes of the show. But thank you so much, Heather, for joining me today. Heather J. Bryant, you can uh, find out more information by go to, her, go to her website and you can find out all those details and all those links. It's heatherjbryant.com, heatherjbryant.com. And I'll make sure that I include those links. You're so awesome. Thank you. It was again. awesome. Thank you for having me. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. Let's do some lives too. Let's do some lives because you never know what let's will happen with lives. Um, but thank you again, Heather. And I want to thank you, of course, wonderful viewers and subscribers. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, make sure you give us a like, uh, rate and review the show if you can. And if you're on YouTube and you're seeing my wonderful guest, again, give us a, um, a comment or like and review. That would be awesome. If you want more information about this show, you can go to outoftheboxwithchristine.com. If you want more information about uh, the work I do, you can go to christineblasdale.com. All those links will be in the show notes. And as I always say at the end of each show, remember to think outside of that damn box. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>